Hi, I'm David Gandera, the chair of the Lung Committee. And I realize that everybody is coming probably directly from other, other meetings, uh, but we'd like to get started uh, promptly because um, this is an official training session for S1400, also lung is known as the master protocol or lung map. And uh, we're delighted to have you here. But we do realize also that there are other activities later tonight. So um, I'm just going to give a brief introduction um, to start. Um, I have a reminder here that says tell everyone to sign in. Because if you sign in, then your institution gets credit for training on this uh, protocol. Um, you're going to hear uh, about a lot of exciting things in association with this. Uh, we really think that this is transformative and it's going to bring better treatments to our patients faster. So it's hard to, to argue with that. And I'll have our um, team up here introduce themselves, starting with Roy, and your role in the, uh, the master protocol. Um, hello, <clears throat> my name is Roy Herbst, I'm from Yale. I'm, I'm one of the study chairs and I chair the steering committee and the targeted agent selection committee for the master protocol. Valley I'm the study uh, chair, and um, I pass it on to Fred. <laughs> I'm Fred Hirsch, University of Colorado. Uh, I'm a st uh, chair of the translational medicine part. I'm Mary Redman. I'm the lead statistician for this study. I'm Austin Ham from uh, SWOG Data Ops in Seattle. I'll be the data coordinator. Larry Schwartz, uh, SWAG Imaging Committee Chair. Uh, Michael Knopp from uh, the Imaging and Radiation Oncology Core for NCTN. Elaine Armstrong, the Quality Assurance Manager at SWAG. Okay, thank you. And you can see places uh, here also for an additional panel that will come up, I believe, at the end of the formal presentations uh, so that we can have a discussion. Uh, so with that, thank you for joining us. Um, and I'm going to kick off the kickoff. Uh, so here you can see uh, our agenda, and these are the orders of the speakers uh, the, as they are seated here. Welcome. And I guess I should go back. So this says addressing unmet needs and drug biomarker co-development, and that's basically the underlying theme here, is there is an unmet need this particular protocol is in squamous cell lung cancer, second line therapy, but it's a paradigm. And if we are successful, it will transcend squamous cell lung cancer, it will transcend lung cancer, and it will be mimicked around the world. And in fact, there are all already knockoffs, as we might say, of this uh, uh, in other areas. Well, here's, here's the reason for this, and most of you in the audience realize that we used to think of non-small cell lung cancer as one disease, and then we realized that histology was important for determining some sorts of treatments. And then all of a sudden, we had a lot of genomic subsets, not only now in adenocarcinoma, but emerging in squamous cell lung cancer as well, although our targeted therapies to date have really made the impact in some subsets of adenocarcinoma. So if we look at non-small cell lung cancer in this way, then what would be unmet needs to be met by this master protocol? One is how do you develop drugs for uncommon or rare genotypes? What if your patient has a 1% genotype? How is a company or an organization like SWOG ever going to test enough patients when you're telling your patient you only have a one out of a hundred chance of actually qualifying for the study. What about the new sorts of technologies such as next generation sequencing? How can we integrate them? How can we uh, achieve acceptable turnaround times for that sort of technology so that the tissue is sent off, analyzed, and the report comes back within an amount of time that a symptomatic lung cancer patient could tolerate, less than two weeks. And then lastly, how do we expedite the entire process for drug 
and biomarker combination development and get those drugs and biomarkers FDA approved. And as you'll hear, the FDA is one of our partners in this enterprise. So this slide, uh, for those of you that were in the Lung Committee or at the uh, Fred Hirsch's uh, plenary session yesterday, you've already seen something along this line. This shows how all the cooperative groups in the United States are engaged in this process. And it shows uh, the Friends of Cancer Research, who initiated uh, one of the arms of this development, along with Roy Herbst. The foundation of the NIH, who is a partner in this and helps our collaboration with pharma in terms of helping fund this uh, enterprise. The National Cancer Institute, of course, and the FDA, incredibly important. And with that, I've done my job. <laughs>